JavaScript has some issues with very large numbers. The creation of the big int type has helped with that. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the problem and how to use big int to overcome that. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript. As always, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember to check out the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Just released a new course uh, about a month ago. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, I provided a Patreon link. And one more thing, I've begun publishing JavaScript articles on Medium. So if you'd like additional resources, please follow me there. So big int is the newest type added to JavaScript. It was created to help alleviate issues that occur when dealing with very large numbers in JavaScript. JavaScript uses the number type to represent both integers and decimal numbers. This requires that all numbers be implemented as floating point numbers. This leads to a few problems, one of which has to do with very large numbers. Or conversely, it can affect very large negative numbers as well. Let's first look at an example of this issue. All right, let me create a couple of variables here. I'm going to do a large number, and I'm going to set that equal to number dot. Now, if you're not sh aware of this constant, basically there's a constant with JavaScript, max safe integer, which is the largest integer that is safe to use within JavaScript. And there's an equivalent constant, min safe integer. And this is basically the lowest negative number that is safe to use within JavaScript without having mistakes. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to log to the console, both of these. Okay, and let's see, second one here. And then after I log to the console, I'm just gonna do a, another method here. I'm gonna log the results of this method. This is attached to number again, and it's basically is safe integer. And basically this returns a true or false, indicating whether the integer is safe or not, is something that won't cause problems within JavaScript, all right? Now you'll see the problem in just a minute. I'm going to continue to add to this and we'll be able to see the problem. So what I wanna do first is I'm going to increment large num, and then let's just log it to the console again. In fact, let's log all three of these again. I'll just copy them and paste them below, okay? All right, so that's what we wanna do at this point. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to go to the console first, then I'll refresh. And we can see this is the number, this is the largest number that is safe to use, the smallest negative number that is safe to use. And it indicates true that it is safe. Now I added one to it, to this one, not to the negative. I added one to it and it looks like it worked correctly. Notice we're now 991, 992 down here, but it does indicate that it's not safe to use anymore. All right, let me go back there. Let me increment it one more time. Like this, I'm just gonna log this one here since I'm not really doing anything with the negative number. The same problem would occur if I were decrementing that, but just showing one example right now, just showing the upper bounds issue. Okay, so I incremented it. Let's see what we get now. Okay, so we incremented once and it went to 992. Incremented again, it stayed at 992. So we're starting to see the problem that occurs when we're using very large integers. Now we can, as I mentioned, we can see the same if I do, if I decrement small num, that one decremented okay, but if I do it one more time, it stays the same as what we had before. And so it's not moving down. And this just illustrates the problem when we're doing mathematical operations on these very large numbers. 
they cannot be accurate. They're not accurate because those numbers are so large. And so that was the reason that the big end type was created. And the big end type can correct this problem. So let me jump back to where we were here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a big int instead of just a regular number. All right. Now, there's two ways to do that. One is using the big int function, which is what I'm going to use here. So we just call big int like that, pass in the number that we want to be represented as a big integer. We pass that in and then that will create a big int. Now, the thing that you will see when you're displaying a big int number is you'll see an N at the end of it. That's what indicates that it's a big int. And that's also how you can create one. I could type out the numbers and then put N after it and that would create a big int. But let's look at this much so far. So I'm going to come out here. Okay, there's the N I'm talking about at the end of that. Now, notice that I continue to use is safe integer. Well, it's displaying false because it's no longer a number. It's a big int. So that's why we're getting false on both of those. But notice now we can increment that without a problem. So we can do mathematical operations on a big int and we don't get the same problems we get when we're using the number type when those numbers are very large. Now I did mention the second way to create a big int. So let me do that here. Basically it's just you enter the numbers and it can be a small number. It doesn't have to be a large number. It can still be a big int even if it's not larger than what is a safe integer. So there I've just created a big int. Now, one more thing I want to show here. If we use the type of operator, it returns big int. And so when we're working with a big int, we can find that out using type of. And that uh, can be helpful as well. All right. If you want to dive into a course, remember the discount links to all of my courses in the description section. Click that bell button to be notified about new releases. I release new tutorials as often as I can. And thanks for watching.